If you're in the market for an underdesk treadmill or a walking pad, this is a video you're going to want to watch to the end because I'm going to talk about seven different things that you should consider when you are deciding which brand or which style of walking pad to purchase because there's a lot of different things that you may not even be considering. And then two things on the list, number five and number six, I thought about way too much. I thought these would be way bigger deals than they were and I ended up spending a lot more money to get these features when in reality I didn't need them and I don't use them them. So let's jump right into number one. The first thing you want to consider before you even consider different models of treadmills is your space and if your space is really well equipped for a treadmill. So a few things to keep in mind. So number one, most of these treadmills recommend that you do have hard floors and you're not walking on carpet. So if you are in a carpeted space, you, you just want to think twice about that. I'm going to be honest, my last apartment, I did have carpet and I used the walking pad anyway, but it did kind of like indent the carpet. So it's not really recommended you do that. Also, of course, it's better if you do have a standing desk. Of course, if you want to be able to walk underneath it, definitely like take note of where you want to ideally put the walking pad and store it when it's not in use before you actually get the walking pad. Because I'm going to be honest, the first walking pad I got, when I got it in the mail, like it was a lot bigger than I had like envisioned in my head. And I just had this vision of like being able to like easily put it under my couch, really measure your space and that will narrow in your options quite a bit. And then additionally, when it comes to your space, ideally you're going to have a single outlet that can support your walking pad or your treadmill. So I have a single outlet here and I'm able to kind of like reroute everything else to a different outlet. I have too many cords, but ultimately these things do take up a lot of electricity and a lot of times they recommend that this is the only thing plugged into your outlet. So if you have like one outlet that's supporting your entire like home office and you already have a ton of things plugged into it, then you may have some trouble with this. That is something to consider about your space before you even look at models. Now, first things first, I just want to say that I have two walking pads. One I purchased myself and then the other one was sent to me by the company for review purposes. However, they're not reviewing this video. They don't even know I'm making this specific video or anything like that. I also do have a discount link. It's an affiliate link. So it does help me out a lot when you use that and it will give you a discount. So I'll put the latest of that down in the description. I think right now it's like hundred or $150 off a of walking pad. So definitely worth checking that out. It does support me as well. So now let's get into the list. The second thing you should consider is if you want an incline to your treadmill. This is something I did not even realize was possible when I was initially looking for my first walking pad. And it's not even something that I was like in the market for at all. But since then, I have now realized that there are quite a few other treadmills that do have an incline. Most of them look like it's kind of like an adjustable incline where it's like you put little like pegs on the front and it does incline. So it's not like the same as you're gonna see in a gym that's like as fancy as that. But there are, you know, underdress treadmills do have an incline and it could help you get like a little bit different type of a workout when you are working. So definitely something that you should at least consider. I'll put a few that I can find down in the description box for available options. Third thing on the list to consider is the weight limit of the treadmills that you are looking at. So both of these ones from walking pad have a weight limit of only 220 pounds, which I feel like is not really that high. But the good news is there are quite a few other models from other brands that do have higher weight limits. So just an example, Example, this one from Deer Run. This one has a 300 pound weight limit and there are different ones out there with different varying weight limits. So definitely consider that. Number four on the list is the storage size. So a lot of treadmills will either fold or they'll have like collapsible feet or something. They kind of condense the size when it is being stored. Definitely take note of that and you will want to measure that against any place you plan on storing it. Some of these treadmills, they can be a little bit bigger than you anticipate at least this was the case for me. So for me, I have two treadmills and one of them is, I'll put the dimensions on the screen, but one of them is like several inches smaller when it's being stored. And those few inches make the difference between being able to store it under my couch or not, which makes a big difference in my space. So definitely take note of that measurement. Number five on the list is something I really considered way too much. And that is the maximum speed of the treadmill. So when I first bought this walking pad, I spent like, twice as much as I probably needed to because I really wanted to get a treadmill that could go up to like jogging paces or like over six miles per hour. This one goes up to 6.2 miles per hour. And I'm gonna be honest, I literally 
never use it for those high speeds for a few different reasons. The first reason is I do have some electrical issues with these walking pads where basically they use a lot of electricity. And when I'm going at those high speeds, I can pretty much guarantee that I will run into even more of those problems than I would at the walking pace. The second reason is it just does not feel as sturdy as a really nice, big, sturdy treadmill that you would get in a gym. And yes, it will still work. Like it's not, like if this is your only option for running and it's like, icy outside and you don't have a gym membership and this is the only thing, yes, it will work. But when I have a choice between going to the gym and going on the treadmill there or running outside, I pretty much always choose those other options because it's more lightweight. It's just not as supportive feeling as those big heavy treadmills. Then, and then number three, if you live in an apartment building, I would not even waste your money on having a treadmill that goes to these high speeds because as soon as I started going on these things, I was like, it is just a matter of minutes before I start getting noise complaints for this thing because it sounds like there's some sort of like construction going on in your apartment. For me, I've pretty much always lived in apartments my whole adult life and I have downstairs neighbors and I do not want to torture them with the sound of me running up his treadmill. So it may work for you if you have like a home with a basement or something and it doesn't matter how much noise you make. But for me, it just does not work for me. So I, I was much more optimistic that I would use that feature, but in real life, I literally never use it. Next on the list is something you should consider, but something that I probably considered way too much when I was shopping for my walking pad. So my first walking pad that I got here is the R1 model. And this one has like a few extra inches or an inch and a half of extra walking like surface area. So not the size of the whole treadmill, but the size of the actual just like belt portion is about like a one to two inches larger. And when I was initially shopping, this was something that for some reason I thought was going to be super important because I just had this vision that if it was too narrow, I would just be like, falling off the side of the walking pad and I would be like tripping and hurting myself and it would just be terrible. And I thought that I had to spend the extra money to get a wider belt. Realistically, I have never one single time ever fallen off the side of my walking pad. Like, especially if you were walking slow speeds, you really do not need that much space. Like your hips are not as wide as think they are. You probably need less space than you think. So I think unless you were planning on running on the walking pad or you have like, legitimately bad balance or something. And you probably just don't need as much space as you think. And you can probably have a little bit of a narrower belt and be just fine. Just for context, the C2 model is about 15 and a half inches. And I think this is absolutely more than enough for my normal walking. The seventh and final thing that you will want to consider is how you plan to track your steps. If it's important to you that you're tracking your steps on your Apple watch or like my fitness pal or something like that. And if that's important to you, just realize that a wrist fitness tracker like an Apple Watch is probably not going to pick up on the steps when you are walking on a walking pad, primarily because your arms may not be moving, especially if you have like your hands on your keyboard or on a desk or something like that. So if that is the case, then I do have a few recommendations. First is consider a treadmill that has a built-in app. So for example, the walking pad brand, which is the type of treadmill that I have for both my treadmills, there is an app which will automatically track your steps. Now I will warn you the walking pad app works well, like 90% of the time, but 10% of the time it can be a bit finicky. Like sometimes the steps just like don't track even when they are supposed to be. So it's not perfect. And I feel like the app is like, could use some TLC, but overall it works fine. And it is able to track my steps even when my Apple watch is not. I've also heard some workarounds where some people will like put their Apple watch on their ankle. I've never messed around with that. First of all, this is like a solo band that will only fit on my wrist. I don't think would even fit on my ankle. And it just seems like too much work to have to be like moving around my Apple watch. And of course I want to be able to check it on my wrist as well. But there are some workarounds, but definitely something you will consider that honestly, I did not even think about before purchasing a walking pad. In terms of the specific models I have, the first one, this is the one I bought myself. This is one of walking pads, most expensive models. It has all the bells and whistles when it comes to like high speed, a bigger size and stuff like that. And then this second one is a less expensive model also from walking pad. This is the one that they sent 
sent to me. And I'm gonna be honest, this is the one that I gravitate towards now the most because I realize I really don't need those extra features. I don't need the high speeds and the giant size and all of that stuff, but I'll link the specific ones down below. So that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you wanna check out some other walking pad reviews that I've done, getting more specifics on the models I've tried, I will link two of those videos right now. And until next time, bye.